Right, hi guys. So this is uh, another video. Last time it was a live tweet, but because I'm going to be talking about live streaming, the irony of doing a live stream when talking about live streaming meant I thought I'd put it on the new YouTube channel. So social media we're all familiar with. I'm not going to talk about what social media is, other than to mention that basically live streaming is the newest part of it, I suppose. It's gone through lots of different stages, social media, and right now the newest facility you can do is live streaming. Right? From the outset, I'm not aiming to demonize it. I don't think there's anything naturally wrong or inherently wrong with live streaming. It's allowed us to do some fantastic things. You probably use it at work. Um, some of you watched the Royal Wedding and that was done through live streaming. TV's worked that way for years. The very last session I did on eSafety was a live stream and it was really valuable at reaching lots of people and getting your questions answered. Um, the important thing though is when our young people are using it, or we are as adults, is to understand who is watching what we're putting on a live stream, why are they watching what we're putting on, and what happens with it when they've watched it. Um, sometimes if you search live streaming, you'll come across this term sexting. It comes in and out of the news quite a bit, okay? The definition I've put there that's from the NSPCC. It's okay, it's not great. It does sum it up pretty well. What's difficult is that young people don't use the term sexting. Okay, it's, it's just not a term that young people use in my experience. And then to confuse things further, adults or professionals sometimes talk about youth produced sexual imagery. And that is the acknowledgement that sometimes young people have made a decision to take an image and share that image. That's not always the case though, as I'll talk about, and even if that is the case, there is still a risk involved which we need to support young people with. I suppose the reason it gets spoken about in terms of live streaming is because a sext is, generally speaking, a, a static picture, so a picture or a snapshot of time, whereas live streaming isn't static okay it is of the moment and can last for longer than a picture does that led me to this bit i was trying to think of things that parents would maybe think and the biggest one is my child would never do that x is a good boy he's a good girl you know this would never happen my kids would never do this and i very much hope that is true and i think with education and open conversations that probably is true actually or as I spoke about last time, if you're the person that your child comes to, even if they have, then they're going to be safe and you can do something about it. And I'll run you through what you can do in a minute. But it's important to understand that all young people take part in risky behavior. Now, the technology to us maybe makes it seem like it's more dangerous, but young people from every existence ever and every epoch of time have always been involved in risky behaviors. The frog there is that boiling frog analogy, okay? That you put a frog into cold water, turn up the heat, and it will not realize that it is boiling. And that works very well with technology. The generation we're dealing with now are the most connected generation ever, okay? They do not have an acknowledgement that you cannot be connected to the internet. That isn't the world they've grown up in. Whereas if you have grown up in that world, if you remember, um, you know, you might remember when there wasn't 3G. You might remember when there was dial-up internet. That's about as far back as I can go. You may remember there being no internet at all. So your experience of the world and the interplay between the digital and the real world is very different from our young people now. So why do they do it? I'm not going to run through all of these because you know, make the video very long. I'll leave them up there. But sometimes it's to do with them feeling like everyone else is and they won't be part if they're not. And you seem to range between that, more damaging ones, so a sense of blackmail or coercion or peer pressure, we used to call those things. But now we would talk about maybe grooming or pressure, okay? And then you've got sometimes an acknowledgement that some people post things or they live stream, and they don't mean it to be asexed or used in a sexual way, they're just proud of their body. Maybe some people are in a long-term relationship. Some of you watching as adults may be in a long-term relationship and that's part of what you do as your relationship. 
This here is taken from the Internet Watch Foundation. It's a really fantastic resource if you can find it online. It's very easy to just touch, uh, type, sorry, IWF. Internet Watch Foundation talks about live streaming being in the moment. It's the thing that people are doing now. They also speak about uh, a child's developmental stage. Specifically the idea that we're socialised, we are taught from a very young age to do what an adult tells us to do. And if someone wants to be predatory with young people, that's a very useful thing that young people have learnt. And they play off on that and they use a person's educational need or their language need or their social need as a way of gaining access to them. You then got tricks and flattery. Now you make someone feel good, they send you an image, you then can trick them into sending you more. And the very bottom one, I think, resonates with all of us. That we all want to feel liked. Okay, we all post a picture onto Facebook or onto Instagram or onto Twitter, and then you get a little buzz if you've had a couple of likes or a lot of likes. You know, if you've ever posted a photo of yourself when you're going out for dinner or for a party, if you're really honest, some of that is because you want people to like it. Okay, now live streaming allows for that, but loads more people to give you that sense of affirmation and do it in real time. So if you've just come back from the gym and you look in the mirror and you feel really good, you go on a live streaming site, you can have 100, 200, 5,000 people telling you you look great and giving you that sense of affirmation. That is a very powerful thing. Not always healthy, but it is powerful. Just to give you some kind of context, so the Internet Watch Foundation are the group that look at and take down images. So they investigate images that are unsafe of young people. Okay, it's legitimate they can do it and they're really the only group that can do that other than the police. When they did their study, they found that of those images of young people, things we might call sexts, 96% of them were children on their own normally in their bedroom which suggests that this isn't something they're necessarily hiding they're not going someone else's house they're not hiding away somewhere it's quite open it's, it's in their room 98 percent of the images were people under 13 so year nine downwards and then you have something called a third party website and this is what i mean by what happens with the image once it's taken so people will go on a live streaming site and then that image is taken and captured, a bit like a screenshot, but there are actually apps that people can use to record your entire video. And then that gets put on a third party site where people share images of children. And 100% of the images on those third party sites were not made on those sites. And what I mean by that is they were harvested, they were stolen from somewhere else. This here is a screenshot of the training I gave to staff, and this is what happens in school. So we hear about a sext, or a young person tells us they've sent something, or their friend has sent something, or we have lots of calls of parents who are worried about their children. Okay, this is what we do. And it's kind of the top right, which I wanted to explain to you. That is for us referring on. Right, the guidance where this comes from it's very clear, it's not our aim to criminalise young people. Sending an image or receiving an image or opening an image of someone under 18 is illegal. But it's not our aim to get people into trouble. Our aim is always to protect them and to help. So if we have to refer to people outside of school, it's to do with, is an adult involved in this photo or this video? Was there coercion or blackmail involved? Is it violent or extreme? Is the young person in it under 13? And is there immediate risk of harm? So is this young person in danger? What I want to make very clear is I can ascertain those things as an e-safety officer and safeguard and capacity in the school without seeing the image. That's part of the investigation that happens. We do not need to see the image. We wouldn't want to. In fact, I normally make it very clear I do not want to see an image. We can still protect people and keep them safe and help them without seeing the image. Okay, depending on what the image is and depending on if it meets those things, the police may need to or somebody else, but also their aim is still just to help. 
Okay, I wanted to make that very clear. If you feel that you've got yourself into a situation that you wish you hadn't or your friend has, your job, your only job is to tell someone who can help you. And I'm gonna share you those names in a minute, okay? In terms of you at home, as parents, there are a number of resources. Some particularly good ones, you've got Think You Know, which is the top right. That's a website, it's free to access, you can find it at any point you want. And that website gives you lots of information about lots of things to do with uh, e-safety and safeguarding more generally, including live streaming. Zip it, bottom right, that is an app you can download, it's free so young people can download it and if someone is trying to get a sext message out of you or ask for an image, it's a way that you can respond to them that shuts down the conversation in a kind of a friendly banter type way. And then you've got the Internet Watch Foundation. They do two things, they have lots of information and guidance on their website, but also if somebody has sent an image or they've heard that there's an image of them online, the Internet Watch Foundation are the people who can take it off. So you can come to school and tell us, or you can go anonymously, or you can go to the police directly and things like that, but ultimately it's the Internet Watch Foundation that gets it off. All right. We have helped people do that in the past, so if you wanted help, that's fine. But it is you as the individual that needs to make that referral. That's not something we can do in school on your behalf. This is a screenshot of what ultimately prompted me to do this video. I was umming and ahhing about what the next e-safety video should be. And at one point it was going to be about gaming and Fortnite. And then this document came out. Uh, you can access it. I wanted to show you where it was. It's more aimed at people in my position who are safeguarding officers or professionals working with young people. And it makes for some quite scary reading, but that's where it is. Again, I would say the point of this is to give you information. It's not to demonise the technology. Okay, I'm not suggesting you ban all of the young people from using live streaming sites. If they know who they're talking to, and they're controlling what is being shared and what happens once the video is finished, they are managing their risks as long as you know about it. Okay, here is different ways you can contact us. If you want more information from me, I'm prob I might leave the comments open for a little bit and you can comment on the video. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then my number is on there. I'm DJ Baron, so you can call me and leave a message and I can get back to you. You'll obviously have to leave some kind of detail for me to be able to get back to you though. There's a school email, there is a dedicated e-safety email which is checked fairly regularly. Uh, or you can just ring up the school. Um, as a parent, as I said last time, your job is to be the person that the young person would come to. That's it. You love your children, you want to protect your children. And to do that, in terms of e-safety and safeguarding, you need to be the person they want to come to. If you're a young person or you know of a young person that's involved with things of this nature and are worried about them, your only job really is to try and get them help. And there on that slide are the people who can get them help. If you have got any questions or any concerns, please do get back to me or contact any of the people named and we'll do everything we can do to help you. Um, likewise, give me any comments for what you would like me to cover in some videos and I'll see what I can do. All right, thank you.